Hi, this is Vicki with the, with the blog Ordinary Women. My web address is aboutordinarywomen.com. I did promise on Facebook the other day that I would, after I worked out a few more kinks, that I would show you how to do my bud vase. I like to make my bud vases with test tubes so I can put water in them. And I don't like to put water in polymer clay without some form of glass in there because even a pinhole will get water going out. I thought I would show you this is my first one. It's really ugly. Yes, we know. <laughs> but that's okay. Um, you can put, you know, polymer clay flowers in them. That's where, where the original idea was I was doing a lot of these little tiny, small, smaller flowers, and I didn't like the way they looked in regular vases. So it, they work really great in these little bud vases. I also really love the fact that our flowers look gorgeous. These are some roses from my garden. Um, eh, it's a little hot out there, like 110 degrees. They're, they're struggling right now. Uh, hopefully it'll cool down a little bit and I will get me some really better buds soon. But this is what I'm going to show you how to make. So we're going to get our supplies together and we're going to get started. Okay, the equipment you're going to need first is probably a pasta machine. That's what I'm using. Most often than not, you are going to need an acrylic roller. You're going to need some type of blending tool. I'm going to be using a dotting tool today. I like to have a few pointed tools around. This is one I made. This is one that I just have. I like to use them for getting into places where my little finger, my big old fat fingers can't. This is one of my favorite uh, texturing tools. Basically, all it is is straight pins baked inside of some scrap polymer clay. Works great for texturing. I'll show you that. You're going to need a cookie cutter. My original one, I used this one, but today I want a little bit smaller leaves because I'm going to add a little bit of flowers. You are going to need something to help dome. You can dome by hand. I I want mine look a little bit more uniform in, my, in the dome itself, even though everything else looks more organic on top of it. Any type of, these kind of cans have a concaved bottom right in here. Um, I hope you can see the concave. Uh, almost all aerosol cans have, a lot of wine bottles have. Uh, depending on how deep of a concave, how deep you want, I mean even mason jars have a concave bottom. So those can be used also. I'm going to be using that today. I'm also going to be using some glass test tubes. This you can get at most craft stores. You're going to find them where the kids' experimental stuff is, like their chemistry sets and you know, the growing rocks and all of that. I got these at a local craft store. They're four to a pack, but you can buy them off of Amazon.com. I got these off of Amazon. Uh, they come in like 25 packs or something like that. They're really nice. They're six inches long. I'm going to be using this size today. The polymer clay we are going to need is, you're going to need some, um, my packages are not real clean today, and I'm sorry about that, but yeah, it's one of those days. Uh, burnt umber, you're going to need a little bit of rhino gray, and I'm talking a little bit of rhino gray, a little bit of urcru, or e c r u. I never can pronounce that right. Now you're going to need some greens. I use, I mix um, one little section of regular green with jungle green. That's usually my base for my uh, green. I also mix a little bit of jungle, wasabi, and green, and a little bit of Spanish olive together to give me my second green. And then I use a little bit of the wasabi on its own. But so those are my blends. You are going to need some what I call my junk colors. These are reclaimed colors. If you're wanting to put add flowers, that's usually what I do. You can use regular colors. I'm not saying you can't. But I like to use reclaimed polymer clay from other projects for flowers, especially little tiny flowers, which is what's going to be on here. And these are some of the colors that I picked out to do that. And I did tell you about my cookie cutter. I hope so. You are going to need some 
cardstock to build your piece on. You are going to need a tile to bake on. If you do not have an oven that you can stand this up and bake in, you're going to have to do two bakes. One of them is laying this on its side and baking, baking the base piece, gluing them together and then baking them again on their side and you're probably going to need a, some cornstarch or you know, like a bed of cornstarch or something like that or even a bed of tissue paper all balled up so you don't damage the flowers and everything else. That's just a quick little hint on that one. So let's get all of our clay conditioned and we'll get started. Okay, we're going to start on our base first. This is actually scrap clay that came into being a pretty color when it was done. So I'm probably not going to have to put a base on this, but if you look at the bottom of this one, this was true scrap clay. I should have put a base across the bottom. I wasn't thinking it was one of the boo-boos you make when you're all of a sudden you got this great idea and you bound and determined you're going to make it. Well, that was the bound and determined I'm going to make it and kind of messed up a little bit. But this particular color, I'm not going to need a base because it's going to fit well with it. What you're going to want to do is make a domed thing. And this is where the concave comes in. I just literally press it down on there. And just keep pressing it until I get a nice concaved piece. It's okay if it's got a boo-boo in there, and, you know, and then use your fingers to kind of get it a little bit flatter around. You know, just work it around to where you've got a nice little domed piece. Whatever your piece domed is, I kind of made a mistake when I first made this one. This is not wide enough. This thing has a tendency when I put my little flowers in it to fall over. So I figured out with this one that you need it basically three times the width of whatever your diameter is on your tube. You want it fairly even. Like I said, just work it around until you get what you want. And then we're going to cover this. I have rolled this out to a number four on my pasta machine. I have an atlas. One is the thickest, nine is the thinnest, so it's about halfway point. And I'm just going to drape it over it. And then trim off any of your excess. Just get it draped over and bent around it. This is just going to be our base. And the reason we're doing this is because there is going to be some color that will be sticking out through and you don't want it to be an ugly color sticking out through your, uh, your moss or your grass at, the, at your base. Just trim it and then pull it down the clay a little bit around it to make sure it's nice and smooth and it's adhered really well. So I just kind of pull my clay down around the top of it. Just pull it down. And if you do have a boo-boo and a little bit of the base is showing, this is showing, that's okay. You can just make sure that when you do put your moss stuff on there that you get it covered. Okay. Now I go ahead and move my base to my cardstock that I'm going to be working off of. Whether I'm going to be just baking the base or I'm going to be making the whole thing. I'm going to be making the whole thing. And the reason is, is because I'm getting ready to make my indent. You take your test tube that you're going to use. Let me get this up here a little bit further so you can see it. Try to get it around the center and then just press down. Work it in there. You want a nice spot for your test tube to go back down in. If it's a little off center, that's okay. You can just flatten things around and we will build up on the moss to make it look more center. Okay, now I got a spot for that to go. And I'm going to set this aside for now because now I'm going to work on my test tube. I go ahead and put this on my tile. I will be bringing it back over. Okay, I've gotten out a, a just my basic brown. And I want it to the length of my test tube at least. Okay? We're going to add some things to this one. I took a little bit of my Urku 
a little bit of my rhino gray. And I'm going to make tiny little snakes, and I'm going to put them all over this, and then I'm going to run it through the pasta machine again. Like I said, it's on the thickness of a number four. But just take tiny little snakes. And just place them in different spots, because you want it to look organic. It's okay if they're not quite straight. Just place them in little different spots. And then we're going to run this whole thing through the pasta machine again. But you want it to be really thin because when it runs through there, you don't want them to be too terribly wide. Different sizes, different styles. You can do ones that are really long, like that one. Just press it down. Take a little bit of your other color and then just work it up to where you've got kind of like a, a pattern in there. But you want your snakes to be really thin at this point, and I mean as thin as you can possibly get them. You know, it's okay if it's, it's you know, breaks off. Get it as thin as you can get it. I probably shouldn't be working off the paper today. Because this is going to give it a more organic look. Because if you look at tree bases, most of them aren't the same color. All the way from the top to the bottom. They're all different colors of, of brown in there. And that's what I'm trying to make this look like. is basically the base of a tree for my flowers. Whether it be my polymer clay flowers. Or whether it be, or, or if it's for my red, real flowers. I work on one color and then I switch back and work on the other color. When you're kind of happy with it, go ahead and run it through your pasta machine again on the thickness setting that you had set up, which was, like I said, mine's a number four. And I'm going to try to make a little bit of a, a knot hole here. And then we'll be ready to go to the next step. Okay, I run it back to the pasta machine again. I know it kind of looks funky, don't it? <laughs> That's okay. Now we're going to start texturing a little bit. You can take your roller. Let me get a little bit of I've, I've got clay still sitting here. A uh, little bit of roller and roll it out a little bit. Kind of give it a little bit of texture. What's nice about doing it with the foil is once you get all your fingerprints on it, you can basically texture them back off and it all kind of fits together again. Another thing to do at this, at this point, if you want to, is give yourself some lines. Partial lines and then stop and then start over here. Just like it if you would if you were a real tree. Work around our knot because we're going to do some lines in our knot. But I'm going to do that on the tube itself. We're going to get this turned over and we're going to we're going to get it on our tube. You are going to get fingerprints on this. That's just the way it is. Um, it's kind of hard to keep the fingerprints off. You can wear gloves, but you will probably get fingerprints on it. You want to keep as much of the air out of this as possible. That's why I say you'll probably get fingerprints on it. Just roll it around, just like if you were going to roll up a cane. Give yourself an area there. I know that's kind of weird looking because I'm going to go ahead and just pull my, pull it together. I'm just going to pull it together and that's where my fingerprints are going to come in. But I'll be, I'll be texturing it to get rid of the fingerprints. 
and some other things get smudged. Okay, when you get to the bottom here, I like to do a little bit of like this. Pinch the bottom together. And then I take my blade and I just gently, try not to cut your finger, take it off like that. Just get rid of that excess. Get rid of the little tip. And then just smooth the clay in and around the base of your, just make sure everything's covered. Make sure there's no air pockets. If there is, poke them. Because you do not want, well actually this project wouldn't matter too much if it bubbled up, but if you were doing uh, slices of cane on a tube, like this, you do not want it bubbling up in weird places. Here, it would just look more, more organic and natural, but, okay. There we go. Smooth it up as much as you can. Okay, I'm gonna be using my finger inside of it for, uh, quite a bit which hopefully my finger doesn't get stuck too terribly much, but anywhere where you got fingerprints, just take a little bit of your, and retexture it up. So you can take your little tools and make more. Make little marks everywhere, like it was a real tree. And like I said, I'm gonna, I'm gonna texture this up a little bit to where it looks more organic, like this is where a knot's at, where a limb had gotten cut out. I can even take this texture tool and do the same thing. And if you mess up, you can always cover it up with a vine. Anywhere you mess up, and I lost my other little guy. Oh, he's right there. All right. If you mess up, you can always, like I said, cover it up with a vine. Okay. Needs texture down here a little bit more. So I'm going to get it textured. I'm going to try to get most of my fingerprints removed off of here. Then we bring our little piece back over here. And we set him down in there. Like so. And then press down. You want it straight. Look down on it and make sure it's straight. We're gonna take a little bit of our scrap brown here and we're gonna roll it into a log or a snake or whatever you wanna call it. More of a log than a snake um, because we want some blunt ends to go to. So we can blend together. Sorry about that. This is gonna help hold your piece all together. Now, like I said, if you were, if you cannot bake this all in one spot, uh, in one shot, what I recommend you do is keep this separately, bake it, and then come back again. <coughs> Sorry about that cough. Come back again and you can glue it back together. High temp glue will work really good. You know, bacon bond. Um, you know, there's some really good ones. You can even use um, liquid polymer clay to get it to come back together. But take your piece, your other little piece, once you're done, and use this as an extra support. Get it around there and then just kind of push it down. Basically, you're making a collar for it that gives a little bit extra support. Like I said, you want to look straight down on it to make sure that it's straight and upright. I know it's a little off center. It won't look that way in a few minutes. Okay. And we're ready to move on to the next step. Just set this aside. We're not going to need this for a little while. Okay, I told you my base color. This is going to be my base color for my vines. It's going to be my base color for my grass. Um, or moss, whichever way you want to look at it. All 
Okay, I just basically take some of my base color, just a little bit, and I start taking little pieces off and flatten them out. With my fingers, I do not want these to be the same thickness. I want them to be, I want them to be really thin, for one thing, but I don't want them to, I want them to look more organic. And so I just take little pieces and I flatten. Get the end softened up a little bit. And then here's where our texturing comes in. We just start working on it. Just literally just pounce. And it will, I like this better, without the paper on this one. Because I need, really need it to stick to the piece. Let me move this out of the way. I said just bounce it. If it folds up on you, that's okay too. If you think you need to add a little bit more, like I think I need a little more green on this one, just add a little bit more green. I need that brown. And then just work it. Back and forth, stick it straight in, scrape across it. You want to look at it as random as possible. We're going to do that with all of these pieces, and we'll be back when I'm ready. Okay. Since this is a little off-centered, see I've got all look kind of like moss. Where my off-center part is, where it's kind of narrow, is where I'm going to start. I'm just going to lay my pieces. If I need to break them off a little bit, that's okay. Just lay another piece in there. Kind of bulk it up a little bit. Trim off where you need to. We're not wasting that, we're gonna bulk it up more. We're gonna work our way all the way around the piece this way. So you're gonna have a little bit of, of showing through and that's kind of what will happen. So I'm bulked up on this side, so I'm gonna thin this out a little bit. Can you see it there? Hopefully you can. I don't want this side bulked up because the other side is what's narrower. But I do want it covered, and if you leave a little bit That's okay. A little bit of brown showing, that's all right. Because earth is usually showing through on most stuff. And I'm gonna add this one over here. So it gives it a more symmetrical look. Okay, we're gonna take our texture tool and we're gonna go back and do it all over again, all the way over it. Like this, just just pounce it in there. That way it looks like it's, doesn't look like it's, um, that you cut to put it in there. Now the leaves, what I like to do is I like to, what's left of my green, or I even get some more green made up, is I like to leave a little bit for my vines, which I'm going to leave about that much for my vines. Um, Oh, I would say a 14 millimeter circle, something like that. The rest of this I'm gonna thin out 
go over the pasta machine and thin it out to a, a number five on my pasta machine, which is a little over the halfway setting for thickness because I want this to be really, really thin. And then I'm going to come back and we're going to add some variegation to the top of them. I'll be right back. Okay, I got it thinned out really well. In the air pockets, get rid of them. We're going to take your lighter greens again, and we're going to do basically the same thing we did with the moss, except we're really going to thin these things, and we're going to just do them in dots because we want them on the, on the center of our leaves kind of thing. So we're just going to do really little dots just all the way around, and then we're going to run the whole thing through the pasta machine one more time on the same setting, the number five setting. Okay, let's get our leaves made. Because it's basically cookie cuttering them out. And you'll notice that they're, I don't, I don't worry about, you know, making sure that it's in the center. You know, my little spots are in the center because I want my leaves to look really organic. Okay, got all my leaves done. Now we're just going to start making some snakes. I like to take my scraps from the leaves. Sometimes I have more than others. Um, that's the reason I always save a little bit of back of my original green. Because if I don't have a lot of scrap left, which I like I didn't have on my last project, I may need a little bit. Just roll a bunch of little snakes and just start winding them up. Um, it, like this was, I actually showed right here. You're going to love this. It actually showed up. If you look at the side, I have an air pocket right here. Just take a little and then squeeze it out. Sometimes that'll happen. They will show up while it's sitting there waiting for the next process. Try to get rid of them. Don't leave the air inside there because it will leave a lump. Like I said, in this type of project, it probably doesn't matter. But in others, it will. Just make snakes. You want them fairly thin and very fairly small. We can just work them up it. And then we're going to attach the leaves. I'll break that there. Because I like to make mine different thicknesses and just start laying them on. Set, add a little few leaves. You can thin your leaves out if you want. Just start adding leaves. I kind of kind of bunch them together so I've got a place to put um, a flower in there. You always do odd numbers of leaves because that's the way they are done in nature. And just work your way up. I'm going to go ahead and make a few quick flowers here real fast. Just going to take a little tiny ball of blue clay, turn it into a ball, and then turn it into a deardrop shape. Just going to take my clay blade, and I'm going to make a couple slices in it. Because I'm going to have these three petaled. 
Oh, maybe I'm going to have them four paddled. One more paddle there. Just take and roll it out. It gives me a cute little flower. Take and shape it with my fingers. I'm sorry for getting my arm in the way there. And take a little bit of the yellow. Drop it down in there. Do some little pokes so it looks like seeds. Cut off the back, so it's got a little bit of a flat spot. If you can see that, just place it in there. Spread it out a little bit, and you've got a little flower. Just work your stuff back together. There you go. Okay, I'm not the best at flowers, never claim to be. But I will make a few of those like that in different colors, going up my thing on both sides, and I will get this in the oven at 275, because I am using Primo Clay. I will bake for about an hour. Uh okay, it's out of the oven. And if you will notice, I kind of changed my flowers a little bit. I thought about putting, let me get me some of my flowers in here. I thought about uh, doing the uh, technique of putting the black acrylic paint on and wiping it off, which is what I did with my original bud vase. But I changed my mind and decided I really just like this the way it is. It's organic, it's quite pretty, and if I, I can always change my mind later. As long as I don't put another finish on this, I can change my mind later and I'm not gonna I like the matte look it just looks more organic and I, I really like the way it turned out I'm not 100% happy with all my little flowers but I've got those big old <sighs> man fingers and uh, they're a little harder to deal with with smaller stuff that's the reason I went with this little tiny flower this is a fun project to do if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, stick around for a few more minutes, and I will tell you about upcoming projects, but otherwise this project is done. So have fun and be creative. Some of the upcoming projects I'm going to be doing is the Malachite cane. Uh, I did have promised for a while to do some of the faux stone. Well, I am going to be doing the Malachite cane. And then after that, I'm going to do um, a Makumi Gain type of Malachite with the same colors that I'm going to use in the Malachite cane, but it's going to be if you don't really want the entire cane, but you can still get the great look of a Malachite. I'm going to be doing that one also. And then I'm, some of the other upcoming stuff coming up is going to be some work in progress. And it's like I have a friend. I have a friend. I have an earwig. Um, in fact, you might be able to see him. I have my friend's self a little friend. <laughs> He's right there. Um, earwigs are really not my favorite thing. <laughs> okay, well, like I said, I'm going to do some work in progress videos of some jar work. A few more of these, but in different styles. Um, that's what I have. hopefully have coming up. But I do know for sure I'm doing the Malachite. The Malachite cane is not a beginner's project. Most of my projects that I put on my YouTube channel are beginner projects. Any beginner that has never picked up any clay could successfully complete one of my projects. 
The malachite cane, not necessarily. It's not what they call a complex cane. What they call it, what I'm gonna call it is a complicated cane. It uses several techniques that a beginner is, it's not for, for a beginner. An advanced beginner, intermediate, advanced polymer clayer is not gonna have any problem with it. But it is not for your beginner, beginner polymer clayer. Find some other, work on some other canes before you come back to the malachite cane. Well, that's all folks. Like I said, like my video, subscribe to my channel. Hope to see you on the next video. Have a good one. Be creative.